today's webinar. My name is Ashley Hammond. I'm the national trainer at CASE, and I have the honor of being your moderator for today. I would like to begin by acknowledging the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. I do this to reaffirm my commitment and responsibility to improving relationships between nations and to increasing my own understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. From coast to coast, I acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people who call this land home. The acknowledgement of this land is a declaration of our collective responsibility to this place and its people's histories, rights, and presence, and to the ongoing work of reconciliation. This event is hosted by CASE, the Canadian Association for Supported Employment. CASE is a national network of service providers, employers, and community allies committed to increasing employment inclusion for Canadians who experience a disability. We believe that opportunities to collaborate, innovate, and learn with and from each other are important. And I invite you to visit the CASE website at www supportedemployment.ca, or to reach out to any of the case staff to learn more about our programs, initiatives, and offerings. A few housekeeping items for today. You will note that you have been muted to allow for the best sound quality for all participants. However, I encourage you to ask questions through the chat box feature at the bottom of your screen. Please feel welcome to ask your questions at any point during the presentation. Sydney and I will address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Please note that we will be recording today's webinar. You will receive an email when it becomes available. Next, I'd like to take a moment to highlight our accessibility features for today. Closed captioning is available in English and automated French. I thank you to Ewan, who will be providing closed captioning in English. To access closed captioning in French, please click on the link provided in the chat box. I'd like to thank Peggy and Pamela, who will be providing ASL interpretation for us today. Our technical support team will ensure that they are pinned alongside the speakers. However, we do recommend that you ensure your viewing settings are set to gallery view. You can adjust your view settings by selecting the view icon located in the top right-hand corner of your screen. If you run into any technical difficulties during today's webinar, please reach out to our technical support for today through the chat box feature. Let's begin our time together today by taking a moment to review what will we cover. We will start by providing a brief overview of Disability Employment Awareness Month, or DEAM. We will take some time to learn about its interesting history in North America and what kinds of activities occur across Canada. Next, I will introduce our guest speaker for today, Sydney Kidder. Sydney will share her career journey with us, the mentors and experiences she has encountered that has led her to becoming one of the newest entrepreneurs in Nova Scotia. After Sydney's presentation, we will explore some ways you yourself can participate in DEAN and what you can do to keep the conversation going beyond the month of October. We'll conclude our time together today with an open Q&A session. Let's get started. Disability Employment Awareness Month, commonly referred to as DEAM or D-E-A-M in Canada, is an annual awareness campaign that occurs during the full month of October. The purpose of DEAM is to promote the employment inclusion for persons experiencing disabilities. 
It also presents an opportunity to celebrate the varied contributions of workers experiencing disabilities. DEEM has a rich history in the United States. In fact, the history of National Disability Awareness Month, or NDEEM, traces back to 1945, when the United States Congress enacted Public Law 176. This declared the first week of October as the National Employee of the Physically Handicapped Week. Of course, we've come a long way in society since then. It was in the 1970s that Congress changed the name to National Disability Employment Awareness Month. In Canada, DEEM never gained traction until as recently as 2010, when Manitoba became the first province to proclaim October as Disability Employment Awareness Month. First, I'd like to take a moment to discuss why we even celebrate DEEM in the first place. Well, of course, we celebrate DEEM because despite the considerable efforts that have been made to diverse the Canadian labor force, Statistics Canada reports that as recently as 2017, 3.7 million working age Canadians identified as having a disability and that only three in five, 59 percent were employed. And unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has substantially intensified the situation. In fact, approximately 1 million Canadian job seekers experiencing disabilities are unemployed or underemployed. We hear almost every day that employers across many industries are experiencing significant workforce shortages. Employers across the country need the skills, education, and experience of all this untapped talent. Supported employment practitioners play a pivotal role in helping them discover this talent. So DEEM is a very exciting time for us who are working in the support employment field. It provides us with an opportunity to engage our communities, to facilitate space for meaningful conversations and collaboration to address these issues. It also provides us with an opportunity to celebrate the important contributions persons who experience disability make to our workplaces and communities. So, how exactly can you participate in DEEM? Well, to be honest, there are endless ways you can participate. While I review some options I've noted on the slide, I invite you to click on the link my colleague is about to share in the chat box. This is a digital gallery we've created of some DEEM-related events and activities that our community partners across Canada have done recently. I hope it gives you some inspiration. A very popular and important activity you can facilitate is to encourage your municipal and provincial or territorial governments to proclaim October as Disability Employment Awareness Month. CASE offers a proclamation toolkit free for you to use that can help you at this juncture. It includes things like a sample letter template to use, along with a listing of government contacts across the country. CASE's Cheers to Inclusion Toolkit is another resource available to you. This is a versatile toolkit that you can use in many different ways. It includes things like DEEM logos that employers can add to their products as a way of showcasing their support, website banners and email signatures, and themed posters, postcards, and bookmarks that you can print off to help promote DEEM in your community. Another popular initiative is an annual lighting campaign called Light It Up for Ending. Each year, workplaces across Canada light up their buildings in purple and blue to ignite conversation about disability inclusion. In 2022, over 400 locations lit up their buildings across 118 communities nationwide. Last but not least, 
Case also offers a social media campaign called 31 Days of Dean. You can use the hashtag online to share stories and events happening in your community for the full month of October. It's proven to be a very popular way to promote events and to promote general awareness of DEEM itself in communities across the country. It's an especially great way to share career or success stories from those with lived experience. Of course, when sharing anything online, it is important to remember that you have the approved media consents before sharing stories on behalf of anyone else. And speaking of stories, I'd like to introduce you to the wonderful Sydney Kipper, our guest speaker for today. Sydney resides in Regina, Saskatchewan. She is currently working on plans to attend Saskatchewan Polytechnic to pursue a certificate in the culinary arts. She has worked in this sector since leaving high school in 2018. Sydney's goal is to become the next Duff Goldman by owning a cake and cupcake shop. She's currently worked for Coco Patisserie, an upscale bakery in Regina. But her love for adventure has led her to apply to Disney World in Orlando, Florida for a one-year internship in the International Representative Program. Her interests include video gaming, crafting, and spending time with her family. The richness of these activities provides Sydney with inspiration and imagination to design and bake the culinary delights at her place of employment. Sydney is a past winner of Case's Philip Emerson Award for Employee Excellence and has been invited to, to several speaking engagements. She takes pride in being an advocate for inclusive practices. Welcome, Sydney. We are so happy to have you with us today. I'll hand over the virtual microphone to you. Thank you for the wonderful introduction, Ashley. Hello, everyone. As Ashley mentioned, my name is Sydney Kidder. I'm here to tell you about my life and journey to employment. Next slide. Before we begin my presentation, we'll include the following points from my amazing life to my employment life, as well as who has motivated me to become who I am today and what I have planned for the future with a little recipe created for Dean. So let's get started. So welcome to the story of me. As you know, I'm Sydney and I live on the spectrum, which has led me to be misjudged a lot in my life. Looking back, I guess I knew I was different but aren't all of us unique, special, gifted in different ways? I was very lucky to be raised in a loving and supportive family. And when I was at home, I felt safe and everything was good and I didn't have to worry about life. As a child, I loved spending time on my grandparents' farm in Harrowby, Manitoba. I loved helping my grandfather with chores, including feeding the cows or getting up extra early to go feed the cats. When I was in the house, I mostly helped my grandmother. When I was in the house, I enjoyed baking many sweets with my grandmother. Those are some of the, my best memories. My grandmother loved gardening as well. We spent hours in her flower garden atop the Cinnaboyne River, looking over the valley. The view was so beautiful, especially in the fall. Next slide, please. My family consists of my amazing parents, my beautiful and brave sister, Hannah, and my amazing dog, Finn. And our new addition to the family, my sister's dog, Winnie, which she recently joined last year. My parents live north of Yorkton in a little town called Priestville. And my sister 
is now living in Saskatoon with her service dog. While well, I live here in the city of Regina. So we are sp spreading it out across the province, which makes getting together a little more difficult with busy work schedules. The upside of this is that it has allowed me to live and work independently. My furry family member is Finn, who joined the family in 2014. She is my best friend, and she has always been there through all my ups and downs to share the joys and sorrows. Next, please. School was different for me, and at times, making friends was difficult but I enjoyed long distance running. A highlight for me was making the provincial track team in a long distance running. Unfortunately, on the day of the meet, the track team bus left without me. I was devastated. However, my parents stepped up and drove me to the competition in time. In a line at time, it was nice to have my parents there to watch me complete, but mostly to have my back. But a breakthrough for me was culinary classes. It started a little rough when it was time to choose a partner. No one wanted to partner up with me. At the end, there was me and this other girl. So we partnered up and lo and behold, we became friends to this day. I remember one time we were making cream puffs, but um, they were more like meringues, which isn't what you want when you're making cream puffs. But what I learned was that not all mistakes are bad. Sometimes good things come from accidents. Next, please. As I mentioned earlier, I'm on the spectrum. This means I was the black sheep in the herd. I was the one who never fit in, no matter how hard I tried. When I was in my early teens, I was diagnosed with I with autism. This was like a turning on a light for me. It helped me understand what made me tick. An estimated one in 66 people have been diagnosed with ASD. Males were identified with ASD four times more frequently than females. That means in one 42 males, were diagnosed with it, with ASD. With females, it's one in 165 were diagnosed with ASD. Lucky me. But with my definition of autism, it's a diagnosis that affects communication and social interactions. Making friends can be challenging. I can express I can experience sensory overload, which has caused me to have panic attacks. People in the spectrum have sensitivity senses. But for me, it's mostly loud noises and touching are my main triggers. It's been difficult, but I have learned strategies to cope with these situations, mostly by listening to music. Next, please. Like everyone, I have lots of activities to keep me busy. Two of my favorite game, two of my favorites are gaming and baking. I enjoy gaming because it's an escape from day to day challenges. And I can be myself and not be judged. My favorite games 
are the Mass Effect series and the Dragon Age series because I am the hero in these games. When I'm begging, I am relaxed and enjoy it. I have a purpose. It's the one time that people are always pleased with what I do. They love my sweets. They love my treats and I love making people happy. And also I may have a bit of a sweet tooth as well. Next, please. <sighs> I had the privilege to do a mentorability experience. This one day opportunity provided me with lifelong memories and frosted my love of baking. The owners were friendly and had lots of experience running a business. They provided me a safe place with respectful coworkers, which allowed me to feel comfortable to learn how to properly work in a bakery. Next, please. Through mentorability, I learned it. Well, first off, it confirmed my desire to work in the particular industry. Two, it reduced my anxiety because they were so welcoming, which allowed me to work on communication skills with coworkers. Three. It helped me learn I need to be able to work at an industry standard, which means getting things into the oven with an amount of time I needed. Four, this experience helped to understand that I was capable and ready to work longer hours. And five, it inspired me to advocate for all people on the spectrum who are looking for employment. Next, please. I've been blessed with a wonderful role model in my life, including the famous Temple Grandin. What a privilege it was to meet her in person and also have a, the chance to speak with her. I got the opportunity to meet her when I was 15, shortly after my diagnosis. It was incredible to know that there were people who were like me out there. Next slide, please. Also, Duff Goldman. I admired him for his artistic abilities. It's amazing how he can make such beautiful things out of food and such in limited time. When COVID-19 started, I moved in with my grandmother and we watched the Food Network a lot. It helped to stay connected and pass the time during the dark time. It helped me see that I could open my own successful cake and cupcake shop. I would love to be an apprentice at Charm City Cakes. By the way, uh, duh, I'm a dual citizen, so I can't come work for you. Next, please. <laughs> My mentors and peers provided me with a sense of belonging and purpose. They show that anything is possible. They notice my potential, which allows me to see it as well. So I reach for more. Everyone there made me feel like I belonged. Next slide, please. Because of my past experience, I had decided to venture into business company or business ownership. My business name is Sid the Kid Cakes. 
<laughs> I plan to advertise on social media, which will help attract more clients with orders. My first big event is this is the Christmas market on November 18th. So if you're in Regina, come check it out. Next, please. The key learning of entrepreneurship are to take things one day at a time. Don't worry about what has happened or what hasn't happened. Stay focused on the now. I have learned about food safety. I memorized the manual, so it's not really hard for me. <laughs> this opportunity helped me learn important business skills and organizational abilities. It exposed me to new creative concepts in baking and provided me with strategies to do things safely. Finally, it provided me with financial, marketing, inventory, and event planning opportunities. It was a crash course in how to run a small business. With all these tools, my future is bright. My goal is to open up a, open a cake and cupcake shop, which will um, have many delightful and unique flavor pairings from vanilla and rose water to chocolate and cherry. Next slide, please. I have enjoyed the times I've been asked to participate in webinars and conferences. I think many people don't have the chance to tell their stories. I plan to continue to be an advocate for those who feel like they don't have a voice. I hope to continue work with organizations like CASE who promote full inclusion for all citizens. Next slide, please. I want employment practitioners to know that they have the key to open all the doors for a person living with a disability. If they just put the key into the lock and turn it, those doors will open for everyone. No matter what challenges they face, you can unlock our superpowers. You have, the, you have to believe in your ex expertise and our gifts because we are all capable. Next slide. So here's my recipe for a successful DEEM event. Two cups of enthusiasm, a handful of teammates, a dash of dreams, a sprinkle of, of new ideas, one tablespoon of imagination, a pinch of media, optional to taste, mix well and bake. Cool and frost with employers or advocates. This recipe goes well with most celebrations served with your favorite refreshment. Next slide. Thank you for listening to my story. I am here to answer any questions if you have some later at the Q&A. Wow, thank you so much, Sydney, for joining us today and sharing your career journey. I love your Dean recipe. I think it's awesome. Thank you. It sounds like you have learned some wonderful things through your mentorability experience, as well as through the other mentors in your career journey. And I especially want to thank you for sharing what you've been learning so far as one of the latest entrepreneurs in Regina. I wish you all the best on this new journey for you. Thank you. Before we reach our open Q&A for today's webinar, I'd like to take a moment to discuss what happens after DEEM. As I shared earlier, DEEM is a great way to spark conversation and awareness. But how can you, as a practitioner, 
keep that momentum you've built in October going throughout the rest of the year. With new employee relationships, it's so important that you consider how you demonstrate your value-added services to them. It's up to you to stay connected beyond Dean. Essentially, what you want to keep in mind is that you want to keep that conversation going. So, how do you promote your services to employers you connect with? Does your organization have a marketing strategy? I've listed some strategies on the slide. Let's take a moment to review each one in a little more detail. You may decide to engage new connections through, through professional development opportunities online or in person. The good news is that supported employment as a field has a wealth of knowledge and resources that you can tap into. One example is the free courses that CASE offers. All of CASE's courses can be completed at the learner's own pace. A great course you might want to introduce employers to is Guiding Principles for a Great Fit. And you yourself may wish to explore a new course just launched recently titled Developing Intersectional Employment Services. My colleague will share a link to our online learning portal where you can learn more about these complimentary courses and self-register. These complimentary courses are only one example of the many different types of resources you can share with stakeholders. Others could be information about workplace accommodations, sharing relevant legislation, and so on, depending on what type of resources they may be looking for. Another strategy for you to consider is to stay in touch with disability advocates or leaders, both online and within your community. For example, Mayan Ziv is a leader who demonstrates the valuable contribution of, of individuals experiencing disability into the Canadian workforce. Follow leaders like Mayan to stay in touch with relevant issues in the disability community and to learn from individuals with lived experience. It might just inspire you to host your own speaking engagement events or participate in other activities that include self-advocates in your community. Informational interviews are another great way to engage the job seeker and employer. It can provide job seekers with an informal opportunity to demonstrate skill sets and build a connection with a potential employer. Employers can learn more about the individual and how their unique skills will complement the workplace. Of course, mentorability is another great strategy. It provides short-term mentorship opportunities. It can be an excellent way to engage a new employer connection and help job seekers explore career interests. Advisory committees are an often overlooked resource simply because they require time and commitment from everyone involved. But if you've built strong connections in your community, maybe with self-advocates, employers, or other service providers, this is a wonderful way you can continue to work together in building a more inclusive community. I always like to say that we work better together than apart. What's even better than it, sorry, what is even better is that advisory committees are another way you can share resources with one another. At CASE, we see the value of resource sharing all the time in our programs. And in fact, I see it a lot in my role through facilitating certificate programs. We'll have a group of learners who come together across Canada and complete five or eight, eight weeks of training together. And in this environment, there's often rich discussions that include sharing experiences and challenges and providing support for one another. Advisory committees can act as a similar platform for resource sharing and such conversations. It can be another way for you to stay in touch with relevant issues happening in your community locally. If you've started sharing success stories on social media or developed other ways to celebrate inclusive employment, don't let that stop in October. Continue that momentum by sharing more things online, if you have permission, or setting reminders in your calendar to celebrate things like work anniversaries. It might seem like a small gesture, but by staying in touch throughout the year, 
you're demonstrating your commitment to a long-term partnership with those that you've connected with. So once again, these are all just ideas for you to think about, but I invite you to connect with your colleagues and have a discussion about what strategies will work best for you and your organization. The key thing to keep in mind is to keep that conversation going. So this brings us to the end of our formal presentation for today. I would really like to thank everybody for joining us uh, for today's webinar. It looks like we still have a few moments uh, left together. So Cindy and I will now open the Q&A for any questions you might have. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hi, it looks like someone has their hand raised. Thanks, Ashley. It's uh, Kristen from Pace and Mentorability. Um, I have a question for Sydney. Um, it was really, really great to hear your presentation, Sydney. I'm just so thrilled to, to hear about everything. And I, uh, I plan events for Mentorability as part of my job, and I'm already thinking about how we can uh, maybe have some of your baking showcased at some of our <laughs> events. So that would be, yeah. <laughs> I would love sorry. that. Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll be in touch for sure. Um, I'm just curious, what is your favorite thing that you love to bake? Of course, cupcakes. cupcakes. <laughs> I love to awesome. make cupcakes. And do you have a favorite flavor that you like to make? Actually, it was actually one I mentioned. It was actually chocolate and uh, cherry. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll be in touch for sure because maybe we'll uh, have you bake some stuff for our events. That sounds awesome. amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. It looks like we have another question in the chat from Kim. She's asking you, Sydney, what is the number one piece of advice you would give to someone experiencing disability who wants to achieve their employment goals? Well, mostly I would say um, just don't let anyone tell you what you can and cannot do, just go for it. Don't just fall out determined and believe in yourself to do what you need to do to get to that limit. Love that. That's such great advice. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Oh, we have another one. Um, Jessica is asking, how did you become involved with mentorability? Well, you see, oh, thanks, Jessica and Charles. Um, well, you see, before I, I actually applied to Coco once before and they didn't accept me at first. So if family friend of mine named Jessica was like, hey, why don't we try mentorability? And I was like, see if you can handle it and see if they would accept you to do a one day thing. And I'm like, sure, we might as well try. And when that happened, um, it was a couple months after and they actually offered me a job after the mentorability. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Looks like we have another question. Um, have you ever considered being a motivational speaker? Yes, I have. I actually, it's been a, a bit of my dream of mine to be a motivational speaker as well, because I want to make a difference in the world to show people that being on the spectrum is no different from being anyone else. We have the same emotions. We are practically equal in many ways. And I want people to see that. Yeah, I love that. I love that you spoke to that as well in your role, uh, in your presentation. I have a question, Cindy. All right. You mentioned lots of things you've been learning as a new entrepreneur, things like event planning, financial planning, you know, lots of really important skill sets. Of all of those, is there one that you really enjoy doing? Mostly, I would say probably 
recipe planning, actually. I'm yeah. trying to figure out what kind of recipes to do. And when it comes to, I also have to think about like, what is it going to be to mostly balance that with money wise too? Yeah, definitely requires a lot of critical thinking skills and planning ahead to see, you know, what might be more popular cupcakes to make, or maybe new ones you want to try and see if it really uh, interests people. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Well, Looks like we got another question. We have one more question. Yes. What will you be doing in Disney and what are you most looking forward to from that experience? For me, mostly um, with Disney, mostly I would be going to work at the Canadian Pavilion, which is um, mostly I would be representing as Canadians. And I would most likely be doing something with food or with people. Nice. So I love to connect with people as well. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, I think we're getting ready to wrap up now. Um, again, I really just would like to thank Sydney for joining us today, for sharing your story. It was so great learning more about your career journey. And uh, I'd also like to thank our ASL interpreters today. Pamela and Peggy, our technical support for today, Albert, um, as well as our closed captioner, Ewan. Um, together, uh, it was a wonderful webinar. Thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.